Hi, Simon here from Gold Coast Solar Power Solutions. Today I'm here with Fronius Solar Inverter and I want to show you a great feature of these inverters called the Energy Management Relay. Firstly, I want to explain the benefits of this feature. Secondly, we'll have a look at what's required to utilize this functionality. And finally, we'll have a look at how to program it. So first off, let's have a look at the benefits. Solar power systems produce their power during the day and this power is all used immediately either to power the loads in your property or if the power being produced is more than you require you will have surplus power which will be sent back to the street to be used elsewhere. Now the problem is that you're usually not paid very much for your surplus solar power and you tend to be charged a much higher rate for power you buy from the grid. So to maximize your savings you're best to try and use a free surplus solar power during the day and limit the amount of power that you use when the sun isn't shining. We call this maximizing your self-consumption as you are maximizing the amount of free solar power that you consume directly. The Fronius Energy Management Relay can help you do this by automatically turning on loads such as hot water systems and pool pumps when the right conditions are met. For example, we often install an 1800 watt element in a hot water system and program the Energy Management Relay to turn this load on when it sees that 1800 watts of surplus power is available. See how the consumption has jumped up when 1800 watts of surplus is available? That's the hot water system being turned on and you can see it runs for a number of hours until the water is fully heated up. Then the thermostat inside the tank automatically turns it off. By doing this we've effectively heated up the hot water for free straight from the sun. So now let's have a look at what's required to utilize this feature of the Fronius inverters. The first thing we need is a compatible Fronius solar inverter which includes the Fronius Galvo, Primo and Simo range along with the newer Gen 24 range. The inverter needs to have a data manager card installed like this one here. A Fronius smart meter needs to be installed in your switchboard to monitor your property's power consumption such as this one here. This is a three phase version, the single phase is about half the width. The final piece of the puzzle is a contact with a 12 volt coil to pull in the controlled loads as required. The product we recommend for this is a Finder 25 amp contactor, part number 22.32.0.012.4340. When you have all these parts installed and wired together by a competent solar accredited electrician, we then need to program the inverter to tell it what to do and when to do it. The first thing we need to do is turn on the Wi-Fi access point on the inverter as follows. Okay, so to turn on the Wi-Fi access point, we need to go from the menu system of the inverter. These are four buttons underneath the screen. If you press any of them, it'll light up the screen. If you have a look at it, above each button, it shows you what each button does. So there's an up arrow there, down, back symbol, and enter symbol. We're on the now menu at the moment. It says now at the top. Then the reading on the now menu is AC output power. If we press back, we now go to the main menu. And these arrows are now changed to a cross arrows. We're going to scroll across using these arrows to set up. When we get to setup, we press enter. Then we want to go down to Wi-Fi access point and we press enter on that. And then we want to activate the Wi-Fi access point. And now we've turned on the Wi-Fi access point and you can see the password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now what we need to do is go onto a computer or a tablet or a smartphone and we want to connect to the Fronius network. So you can see I've got a list of networks here and we've got the Fronius one here with the data logger ID here, 327912 in my case. So you want to find your one and select that and we want to connect to it. And you want to enter the network security key which was 12345678. We'll press next. Okay, so we see there we're connected to that network. But it says no internet and now it's quite normal don't worry about that at all we're connecting directly to the inverter we're not connecting to the internet at the moment so in your web browser we want to type in the uh, search column and we don't want to actually search for it we just want to go to this address this ip address which is 192.168.250.181 so just type that in there and press enter and this is logging in directly to the inverter. Now you can see on the right hand side down here we've got settings. We want to go into settings here. And then on the left hand side we've got load management. We want to go into load management. 
and this is where we actually set up the energy management relay so what we would normally do is just give it a name we'll call this one hot water and we want this to be turned on by power surplus so we want the hot water system to turn on when it detects 1800 watts of surplus power or feed in power as seen here and we want it to turn off when it starts detecting that it's taking 100 watts of power from the from the grid when it's consuming 100 watts now we've we've got the option of uh, adjusting the minimum duration per on signal if it was say a pool pump you probably have this set a bit longer you don't want your pool pump potentially only running for one minute then turning off again and the maximum duration per day we quite often set this to 720 minutes because remember the hot water system we want it to be able to run all day but it's still controlled by the thermostat inside the hot water cylinder as well so as soon as it reaches the right temperature it will turn off anyway now this is an important thing we've got desired duration here now with a hot water system if it's a miserable heavily overcast rainy day and there isn't 1800 watts of surplus power you still want to make sure that the hot water is running you don't want to be left with a cold shower at night time because the hot water hasn't been able to heat up because there hasn't been enough surplus power so what this does is tells us that this is the minimum time we want the system to run each day so we're going to set this to 340 minutes so 340 minutes and we want this to be completed by 6 p.m so what this is going to do is even if it's a miserable day and there hasn't been any surplus solar power at all 340 minutes before 6 p.m the hot water system is going to turn on and start running for that amount of time the the time in the desired duration section now you can adjust this to whatever suits you but this is the amount of time that you want your hot water system to be running for whether there's sun or not even if it's a heavily overcast miserable day we still want the hot water system to run we don't want to be left without any hot water at night time so we want to have a minimum set run time per day so what this will do is 340 minutes before 6 p.m it's going to start heating up now you don't really need this desired duration period if you're using this load management function for something like a pool pump it's not super important whether the pool pump runs every single day so with a pool pump you could just leave the desired duration period turn off now if we set all that after you've done that you can press tick the settings will apply successfully okay and you can see here this is a state of the energy management relay at the moment when it's off like that it means it hasn't turned it on if it goes to on quite obviously it means the relay has been powered and it should be feeding power to the hot water system if the thermostat lets it now if we just scroll down a little bit as well you'll see we've also got load management two three and four so you can actually set up to four different devices to be controlled by the load management on the Fronius inverter here which is pretty cool I don't think anyone would usually use more than two but it's a very good feature if you ever need to and you can see that the state of that relay has just come on so it's detecting enough surplus power right now to put the 1800 watts across so that's great news so I hope with this video you've been able to understand how the load management works what it does what's required for it and how to program the inverter to control that load management device correctly thanks very much for watching this video I hope it's been helpful for you